All right, folks, we are back here on Issues and Answers on WLTH 1370 AM. I'm Scott Cannon. The, the phone number is 219-885-1371. That number again, 219-885-1371. Uh, if you got anything you want to say about the China-Taiwan issue or anything else uh, that we're going to be talking about today, uh, please give me a call. Now, remember, earlier in the last segment, I, I told you guys. I told you guys to put a pin in something that kept coming up over and over again in Governor Eric Holcomb's visit to Taiwan, and that was semiconductors. Semiconductors. Now, what are semiconductors? Semiconductors are referred to a material like silicon, silicon that can conduct electricity much better than an insulator such as glass but not as well as metals like copper or aluminum but when people are talking about semiconductors today they are usually referring to semiconductor chips these chips are typically made from thin slices of silicon with complex components laid out in them and specific patterns these patterns control the flow of current using electrical switches called transistors in much the same way you control the electrical current in your home by flipping a switch to turn on a light. Now the difference between your house and a semiconductor chip is that the semiconductor switches are completely electrical, no mechanical components to flip, and the chips contain tens of billions of switches in an area not much larger than the size of a fingernail. Now, what do these semiconductors do? Semiconductors are how electronic devices process, store, and receive information. For instance, memory chips store data, and software is binary code. Digital chips manipulate the data based on software instructors and instructions, and wireless chips receive data from high-frequency radio transmitters and convert them into electrical signals. These different chips work together under the control of software. Different software applications perform very different tasks, but they all work by switching the transistors that, there's that control the current. Okay, now I, I bet you all wonder, what does this have to do with the tea in China? How does this affect my life here in northwest Indiana or in Chicagoland? Or if you're out listening on, uh, on Facebook, well, semiconductors basically are responsible for everything in our modern life. Everything. We've created this modern existence where we can't live without these things. Okay, microchips and computers are usually the first connection that people make. Depending on the type of chip, a semiconductor uses binary code to direct commands you give it, whether it's to launch a program or to save a document. In telecommunications, the principle of semiconductors for telecommunications is the same, to control machine functions. A smartphone semiconductor chips affect its display, navigation, battery use, 4G reception, and more. Even taking pictures and using different apps taps into one chip or another. Yes, folks, even your household appliances, refrigerators, microwaves, washing machines, air conditioners, and other machines around the home and office operate thanks to semiconductors. Different chips control temperature, timers, automated features, and so on. In banking, everybody goes to the bank, right? I just came from the bank a few days ago. Once you understand what semiconductors can do, it's easier to imagine how different parts of our high-tech world benefits from them. Banks are major investors, especially in the best microchips manufacturers have to offer. Computers and their banking systems for online communications, digital accounting, cloud platforms, and more are the key. But banks need semiconductors for what? the ATM machine, their security cameras, and even automatic locking mechanisms. 
the, this is also a case where the more powerful the technology, the better. Semiconductor chips can help banks keep your money and personal information safe, even more so as AI and machine learning evolve with banking. With security, semiconductors have both improved and hindered it. The evolution of microchips alongside other parts of digital technology has opened the way to new and intelligent threats. However, these same innovations also help defend against them. A semiconductor contributes to the cybersecurity in your computer. Uh, quality semiconductors in a camera with motion detectors can allow for faster alerts and, and security measures. In the healthcare field, the medical field uses advanced technology. Complex and risky surgeries are safer with the help of machines operating with precision. What's in those? Semiconductors, monitors. If you have a pacemaker, you know somebody with a pacemaker, they got some semiconductors inside them. Even talking to patients and diagnosing systems is possible through video conferencing. People talk to their doctors on Zoom, on their phones or on their computer. What's in your phone and your computer? Semiconductors. None of this equipment can do its job without semiconductor chips directing the power, sensors, temperature, pressure, calculation, and other many functions. Healthcare is an area where the achievements in semiconductor technology have improved the most. They've improved the quality of our life while safeguarding it too. I bet you think that's it. Nope. Transportation, cars, buses, trains, airplanes are just bigger devices that also use semiconductors. If you use GPS in your car to try to get somewhere, guess what's in that? A semiconductor. Your Wi-Fi. I'm using Wi-Fi now to look up stuff while I'm on the air. This entire studio, I'm, I'm connected to you guys on Facebook, WLTH Radio. Give me a call. Uh, or or uh, give me a shout on Facebook on WLTH Radio. That's all uh, electronics. Uh, your vo the polite voice alerting you about each stop on your GPS. That's also controlled by semiconductors. And it's going to get even worse once we switch over to electronic vehicles that have more features than analog models. Uh, they take the stress out of travel with handy tools for navigation, roadside assistance, parking, and more. A lot of cars now, um, my folks actually have a, a SUV that allows you to see on a screen in, in the dashboard how to parallel park or how to back up in the stuff because there's a camera in the car. There's a camera in the car that allows you to see behind you. The future's here. And uh, finally, manufacturing. The benefits of semiconductors come full circle to improve their own manufacturing and that of every other commercial product. Machines and factories do specific and repetitive work. The result of carefully set up hardware and software. Also, keep in mind that each device draws on a certain amount of electricity. A bad design could short circuit a part of the manufacturing process causing delays and unnecessary expenses. So I just gave you eight different ways that semiconductors make our world go round. And that really is how it is. These semiconductors have become such a part of our lives that now we are at a place where we cannot live without them. Now, what does that have to do with Taiwan? What does that have to do with China? Well, Jimmy, Taiwan makes 90% of the world's semiconductors. Yes. 90% of the world's semiconductors are made in Taiwan. They basically dominate the industry. Um, 
You can thank, uh, once again, you can thank our politicians. We talked about this last week, and we're going to talk about it some more in, our, in one of our new segments. Our politicians sent jobs overseas, and uh, this is what happens. When they send your manufacturing base overseas and you don't make things in your own country anymore, especially the things that are needed for your society to function, this is what happens. And so right now, our number one competitor, competitor, our number one global competitor, China, is just basically one straight away from controlling the entirety, basically the entirety of the world's semiconductor market. So if we let China take Taiwan, what do you think happens to the United States? I'll wait. It gets bad. It gets really bad for us. Uh, yeah, it gets really bad for us. Uh, our society would probably uh, stop functioning in about six months or about a year. Uh, all the things that I just named for you earlier in the segment run on semiconductors, folks. Imagine hospitals without, you know, functioning defibrillators and heart monitors and the, the electrical grids. Uh, imagine train stations, airports, I, uh, you know, uh, it would really be bad. We won't have anything new for a long time. Our laptops and, and our, uh, our phones, you won't have any more new phones. You won't have any more new laptops for a long time. And so it in itself, China itself could checkmate the United States of America just by taking Taiwan and controlling the semiconductor industry. So all this nonsense you're hearing from politicians, Democrats, Republicans on, on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, they do not give a dog on about whether China is democratic. The United States does business with Saudi Arabia. They do not care about any human rights issues. Again, the United States does business with Saudi Arabia, who's waging the most, uh, the worst humanitarian crisis on the planet as we speak in Yemen. The worst crisis, humanitarian crisis since World War II. And guess who gave them the weapons? and gives them support. Guess who's dropping our own bombs on Yemen? Barack Obama did, Donald Trump did, now Joe Biden is. They all are, they all do it. So they don't care about human rights. They don't care about democracy. This is about the global game. Who gets to control the 21st and 22nd centuries? And you better believe if China ends up with all those semiconductors, they, at that point, will control the 21st and 22nd century. All right, folks, please give me a call if you got something to say about this topic, 219-885-1371. That number again, 219-885-1371. I'll be back with the happy happies.